Hi guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a wig tutorial. The last few hair videos that I've done on my channel have all been using human hair and I haven't forgot about those of you who are also working with synthetic. And you know, in many ways, I actually prefer it. I feel like um, I can get a bigger tease out of synthetic hair. It's cheaper. I can be more unruly with it. So in this video, I wanted to take a very in-depth look at the whole process behind teasing a wig. So I'm going to show you how I took this wig from start to finish. And this one is from SewWigs.com and they have sponsored this video. I can think of two main reasons why you would want to be teasing your wig and number one is obviously for the volume and the height and the drama of it all but there's a second more subtle reason why I tease my wigs and that's because I, it can give the hair more integrity and more hold. Sometimes people ask me, Kine, I want to do these hair flips, but the hair just gets so tangled, it gets all over my face, and I use tons of hairspray, but what else can I do? And that's where I always think the teasing step is so powerful because even if you're not down for this like huge gospel hair fantasy, if you tease your hair, it allows it to kind of grip onto whatever style you're giving it. A brand new wig sometimes is the hardest to work with because the hair is not stiff enough to do anything with it. The hair is just almost too clean and it's too free and it just flies all over the place. So if you do a little bit of teasing, it gives the hair um, more resistant so it can hold on to the hairspray, it can hold on to whatever style you're giving it. So maybe you can tell I'm a big activist for teasing. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys exactly what, why, and how I do it. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got our wig right here. It's this um, sort of dusty gray lavender rose sort of color, if you can imagine all of those colors put into one. Um, it came in a bag that looks like this. Again, it is from SewWigs.com, our sponsor for the video. The first thing that I'm gonna do with this wig is to curl it. And curling the hair is always gonna give it more volume than it being straight with all other factors being equal. I mean, the wig already comes in this sort of loose wave, which is very, typical of factory curled synthetic wigs. I prefer a tighter curl. I prefer to use my own rollers. It, I think it makes the hair look more lush, more full. It hides mistakes. The curlers I use are called wire mesh rollers. They're from a brand called Diane. And I always get this question. So the size of these are, I think one and one eighth inch in diameter. I would go ahead and buy like three packs, maybe four to be very sure. I, th I would estimate that I use about 30 when I do an entire head. You can just watch how I do it. The idea is just to pull out a section of hair that's roughly the size of the roller, something like that. And then I start about maybe three quarters of the way down. I wrap the end around the roller and I roll it to the base. And then to keep the rollers in, I think I got these from Bobby Pins. They're just three inch long pearl head pins. You can also get these at like maybe a fabric store or a craft store. They just have to be long enough that they are longer than the diameter of the roller so that they go right through like that. So now I'm gonna steam the curls in place and oh my god, I got a new steamer and you can't see the bottom, but it's actually pink. Um, I've had my old one for years and years and years, probably like if I had to guess like eight to 10 years, something like that. So I've covered the head with a plastic bag to keep all of the steam inside that bag. And then I'm gonna, once this really gets going, stick that steamer head underneath this bag, hold it there for like three, four, five minutes, I don't know, until the hair is really, really damp to the touch and I can feel it from even outside the bag. I forgot what it was like to have such a nice steamer that's so quiet and blows continuous steam that doesn't stop every 20 seconds. So that actually went faster than I thought. I can really feel from the outside that it's really hot all over. I'm just gonna let this dry overnight and I'll be back in the morning. I'm probably gonna be wearing the same exact outfit just for the sake of continuity. Not that I'm this gross slob. Well, I guess I am, but here you are taking advice from me, so. And I'm back. So it's been overnight, like probably about 10, 12 hours, which is 
far more than enough um, so I can take these curls down. I've taken out every roller except for these one, two, three, four, five along the hairline because I'm actually going to do these last and lay them on top of the hair after I've teased up everything else. So now I'm going to tease up the rest of this hair which is going to be the main focus of this tutorial. I use a brush that looks like this. I've used it many, many times on my channel and I still don't know the <laughs> exact name for this. It's like a duo fiber, boar bristled, synthetic bristled, black and white hair brush. Just look for something that looks like this. What I do is I start maybe a third of the way up the shaft of the hair but I'm not gonna brush it straight up and down like this what I do is a more circular motion like this like I'll show you like this and you can even go out like that you do these circular motions and what happens is you get this cloud of hair that is balled up right around the roots now let's suppose I wanted to use a comb that looked like this let me show you what not to do what you're not going to do is take the hair and brush straight up and down like that. See how this comb doesn't grip the hair? It hardly does anything. I have to really push the hair down. And see when I do this, the hair just bunches up like that. But if you really look at it, it's not fluffy at all. It just takes so much hair and pushes it towards the base when that's not what I want. You have to be gentle with it. And see how instead of packing it towards the end, the hair kind of just floats out like that then I'm still getting this cloud at the root, but instead of packing it all in the root, it has turned the strand of hair into this sort of cotton candy texture. That's what I want. Here I'll show you another way you can do it. You can sort of do it like a pack, pack, brush motion, like pack, 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 and then brush it out. Pack, 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 brush. Pack, 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 brush. So in one hand, I'm holding the strand of hair at the end, and in the other hand, I'm backcombing the base. Every single brush stroke, pulls some hair out of the ends. So the more I do this motion, the clump that I've got holding in my hands gets thinner and thinner until I'm holding nothing in my hands. So I don't count out my brush strokes. I don't brush until I do, okay, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I kind of just do the brush strokes until it takes everything out of my hands. I'll show you again. So here I've got my strand of hair and I'm doing this pack, 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 pack brush pack 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 brush let me get it in my hand again pack 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 brush pack 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 brush pack 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 brush maybe cotton candy wasn't the best word to describe this because cotton candy you think pretty and fluffy but there's nothing really pretty about this you know the hair is going through this very ugly hideous stage before it can look pretty but this is what it should be looking like if you really want it to be really packed down at the base and especially I'll do this for a wig that's as brand new as this one. What you can actually do is take strands that you've teased and tease it again. So take that strand of hair in your hands and do it all over again. So you're packing more hair towards the base. So you're really getting some height out of this. The goal is to add a lot of density right here at the base. So if I push this down, you can see there's a little bit of resistance there. If I take the end of my brush, I should be able to stick it in there and pull up without breaking the hair. I shouldn't be able to run my brush right through it like I can right here. If I'm teasing this very aggressively to ensure so much density at the bottom, I can afford to do that because these strands of hair, the ones that frame our face, are tucked away for right now. So these I won't tease as aggressively. For the sake of smoothing it out in the end, I always tease the front sections of hair away from the face. So I'm all the way back here teasing behind the section so that all of the messiness is hidden away when the hair falls down that way. When it comes to the hair back here, it doesn't really make that much of a difference if I tease it on the top, on the bottom, right side, but when it comes to the hair around the face, then I only tease the back of it.
Oh my god, so this is what our wig looks like now. Oh, I can see a little bit of opportunity to do a little bit more right here. So this is what our wig looks like now. Oh my god. So hopefully yours turns out something like this. It should look very like dramatically big when you've teased up everything, but obviously when we smooth things out, it's not gonna be anywhere near this big. If you weren't curling your hair, by the way, you could still hide the front pieces of hair just with a little elastic, then you would clip them forward like that. Um, but in any case, I'm gonna start out by smoothing the hair. And what I always like to do is I just plop this right off of the stand. I hold her upside down. And then I just start brushing very gently using the same exact brush I've been using this whole time. I just brush the surface of the hair. And you can see it starts to look just more smooth instantly. If I want to maintain this much height in the wig, what I'm not going to do is take my brush and press down and brush all the way from root to tip. See how I'm brushing and I'm not really brushing from root to tip. All I'm doing is just flicking the brush through the surface of the hair like that. That's because I want to maintain as much volume as possible, right? What you have to do is um, sort of do a divide and conquer technique. You have to take the hair little by little at a time. So if I worked at the base of the hair by doing these flicking motions, the way I'll smooth the ends is I place my hand here as an anchor and hold the hair tight. That way when I brush the ends, it doesn't pull at the base because my hand is there to stop it. Oh, got my, got in my mouth. For the back, I use my hand as my anchor and very softly run the brush over the hair. Many, many times I've been asked this question, how do I tease and curl the hair without getting so much frizz at the bottom? So here is some frizz that I've got going on at the bottom. Not that much because you know what, to be honest, a lot of it comes from the curling step. If you're putting in the hair super messily and you're, you're not caring about the end, then obviously the end's gonna get all tangled and frizzy. So you have to make sure that you put it in the roller nice and neat, and when you take it out, you roll it out so that the ends remain neat. Also, sometimes if you use very small rollers, then it can result in that sort of frizz at the end. Using larger rollers will help prevent that, but let's say you've done all those things and you're still finding the ends are a little bit frizzy. My hand holds it right at the end, and I can take the very end and brush it into my hand like that. And that always fixes any sign of frizz. So I'll do that again to show you, just like that. See? And that's all you have to do. I think now is a good time to take out these front parts of the hair. So let me do those slowly and then I'll tease them. If up here I tease twice, Maybe down here, I'll only tease once. So why don't I start here? This strand of hair, maybe this is a little bit too big, so I'm actually gonna split it in half because the strand that came right out of the rollers was a little bit much. And I'm doing this pack, 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 pack brush method. Over here. Let's do pack, 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 pack brush. Pack, 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 pack brush. If it's able to stand up on its own by you just pushing it back, that's exactly what you need it to be doing. Smoothing this out shouldn't be that much of a challenge. All that's left is this hair, this front hair anyway. So again, I am gonna smooth it out by starting upside down because for this style, I just want everything out of the face, right? There's no like complex parts or side swept, no nothing like that. I'll just all of the hair is smoothed out of the face. I always love this step because the moment I turn this right side up again is where I get to see all of the fruits of my labor. How? Oh my God. I just went to the gym earlier today and my arm is like still in pain. And let's flip her up again. Ow! <sighs> And this is what we've got. So let me take those ends and just blend them with the rest of the hair. I 
I'm gonna take a good number of clips that look like this, alligator clips, duckbill clips, I'm not a scientist. And I'm gonna use them to pull the hair back when it's right up in my face. Just by sizing this up, I can tell I just need the help pulling the sides back. This front section here, I'm not finding it's really falling down onto the face, but the sides are, so that's really just where I need the clips. Just very, very gently brushing it using that anchoring with a hand method. This hair smells very good. Okay, I think we're nearly done. Let me take these clips out because I don't want them to leave an imprint on the hair. Something you can do is you can take your pearl head pins and you can use those to keep the hair propped up. I'm gonna put it in at an angle so that it almost acts as a little fence to keep the hair from moving. Just in the same way that the clips did, except this leaves less of an imprint. All right guys, I think we are done with this wig. I think it looks gorgeous. I'm just gonna go change into something a little bit more comfortable and I'll show you what it looks like on. So this is the final look. It turned out absolutely huge. I feel like very much rock and roll Dolly Parton. Obviously if you do more teasing or less teasing then it, it will turn out bigger or smaller. I've shown you previously in other videos how to straighten your wig and detangle it to undo the teasing. Um, so in a way, the teasing is reversible, so if you tease it too much, there's always a way to go back. But in a, some other respects, the teasing is an irreversible step because when you tease the hair and you run your brush through it, it stretches out the fibers and changes the hair forever. So it's never going to be exactly as it was when it was brand new. But you know what I found is that sometimes the second or third time I restyle a wig is actually the best because when the wig has kind of gone through it already, it just takes the teasing a little bit easier. It stands up taller. It's funny because the lifetime of the wig, it sort of goes through this like augmented bell curve shape where it's, it starts out good and then it gets better after a while and then you go through the wear and tear and it starts to deteriorate to the point where it's harder for it to take a curl, it's harder for you to detangle it, and maybe it's time to get you a new wig. But you know what? I really have so many wigs throughout my house that could really last me through the apocalypse. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something cool. Before I go, I wanted to shout out some amazing artists on Instagram for tagging me in their works and their recreations of some of my tutorials and some of my looks. So thank you so much for the tag. I really appreciate it. And I also want to say thank you to our sponsor for the video, SewWigs.com. So I'll leave their links down below so you can check out this wig and other colors. Let me know what other videos you guys want to see me do. I've had lots of requests to do like these drag basics videos. So that's kind of the idea I had going into this video. Um, but let me know your other ideas and maybe I'll do them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.